Good morning. This is Test Shoot Friday. Um, nothing, nothing specific. Well, no, it is something specific. We're shooting Christmas drinks. I don't have any Christmas work in my portfolio. I've never shot a major Christmas campaign. And by not shooting any Christmas stuff, it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. So the aim of today is to make sure that next year we get booked for a Christmas shoot. Um, not for any particular reason. I don't need it as part of my repertoire or my portfolio. It would just be nice. I think it's something on the bucket list up there with the McDonald's and the coffee brands and all the rest of it. So that is what today is going to walk you through it. A lot of it will be B-roll with voiceover because I'm actually going to be working today um, and, and I can't multitask. As much as I wish I could, I can't. I've sort my hair out as well. He's doing some weird, weird stuff. But there we go. Anyway, I'm going to get some camera set up, get it all rolling, talk you through the setups, the lighting, the set building, the whole shebang. And hopefully it makes an interesting video. Let's crack on. So this is the, the morning after the night before. And excuse the winter apparatus. The office is heated. The studio is not because it's a fan heater and you can't have the fans on whilst doing audio. And I've not been very organised when filming in the freezing cold. Anyway, this is how the shoot went down. So first of all, I want to give you a quick run through of the day. We started at 10, shot through till 6.30ish. I was done by 7, back home, gin and tonic in hand, good to go. It was just myself and the stylist. The stylist is Mandy Thompson. She's a very good stylist. Um, and we wanted to work on these Christmas drinks. And I had kind of a theme in mind. And I'm going to tell you about all the technical lighting bits after this. But initially, what you need to understand is the whole thing of doing a test shoot is not to take individual good images, which is obviously useful, but it's to shoot a series of images that have a purpose, that have a narrative. And mine were all Christmas drinks. And to build this cohesion alongside it, we're doing a single light source, which we'll get to in a bit as to how I manipulated that. And we're making sure there was a soft fabric in every shot. The colour palettes were predetermined. The aesthetic of like hard, soft textures were predetermined. And the subject matter was predetermined. All we had to do on the day was bring them together and create the images. We did some top-down shots, 45-degree shots, straight-on shots, the whole shebang, but that's not important because we could have shot from any direction or angle we wanted to. The having a soft fabric in every shot, the single light source, and the colour grade at the end is what gives it the cohesion, and that's how we did the day. Did about 10,000 steps in that day, so I walked about six kilometers in the tiny space of my studio. It always looks bigger on a time-lapse and video than it actually is. It's not that big here. This looks miles back. Well, it's, it's big, but it's not huge. Shot one of the day was the Baby Sham. Baby Sham, for those who don't know, is like a classic 80s pear cider champagne -y drink. It's what boomer parents gave to their kids and said this is suitable for kids, despite it being like 7% volume. Anyway, childhood alcoholism aside, that was what was up first. We'd already ordered the curtains. I ordered these from Amazon. They were 50 quid. They'll probably be getting returned because I haven't used them really, um, which is quite common for styling stuff. The curtains had to be steamed because they turned up absolutely battered. Luckily, we have a steamer in the studio and we just hung them on a background support. The rest of the background was two planks of wood that I'd painted previously, just standard like MDF boards, about four or five mil thick. You don't want the really thin ones because they bend a bit, but thick enough to get the job done. With one of the background walls, I slightly displaced it so it doesn't run flush like a natural wall was. So normally you'd have a wall meeting like this. I made my wall meet like this. And it just added a bit more depth to the shot. Each shot had a small Christmas element, nothing so overpowering that it couldn't be used in the rest of my portfolio, but enough that it was something which goes, yes, this is part of a Christmas series, but we can still have it out there in March. Now lighting-wise. Lighting-wise, we use this. Hang on. This is my current light I'm using. Um, it's a 1200 watt head. It plugs into a pack via one of these. There we go. Uh, and I've got the hyper reflector from Aperture on there. Now the reason I use this is because I like a single light source. I like to light with a single light source. Um, and I need a lot of power because of that. So with the style of work I do, you could create the same shot that I create with seven to eight lights. Or you can do it with one and a lot of flags, scrims, silks, fingers, dots and dabbers. I prefer that and here's the reason why. If you're using just one light, one very, very powerful light, very far away, my light was about eight meters from the set, you get an even spread of lighting across the whole scene. The entire scene's evenly lit. 
It's directionally lit, meaning it just goes in one direction, which works great for advertising. And the shadows are crisp, which is very much my style of work. In order to get the shades into the shot, we bring in flags. Now the closer you have, let me show you a flag, wait there. This is a flag, it's on a metal little frame. And my one here is actually black fabric just taped onto it. But watch this, what I can do, I've got my single light source here. We can cut it out. If we bring it closer, you get a sharper cut. And as you bring that away, it feathers more. And you can really start to control the light and exactly what you want to show by using this. And this is one of the tools I use all the time. So we use the flags, the closer it is to the set, the sharper the line, the further away it is, the more gradation you get. It's a lot like dodging and burning in a dark room. I say a lot like, it's identical. So we use those in order to create the depth in the shot rather than balancing the power of multiple lights. Every time you add a light, especially to a reflective shot, drinks, chrome, glass, the like, you add a catch light and you might not want that catch light to be where it is. So rather than having one of those really busy 1990s style drink shots with gradients and catch lights all over the place, single light source, flags, scrims, silks, dots, the lot. And that was shot one completed. Now shot two was a top down of a drinks trolley and we wanted to get the fabric in again. Now the problem is when we took the shot at the start, it looked great, but the fabric was too dominant. So again, we cracked out the flags and we used the flags to cut off light to places where we didn't want it. So you see my shoulder is now dark, but you can still kind of see it. As we move this here, it becomes a bit more visible and if we move it here, it becomes much darker. That's what we're doing in this shot. The whole vibe was like, it's a tray of drinks that have been collected from a party, the party's over and it's Christmas. We, there wasn't really much Christmas decor here, but the green fabric was like the Christmas tree green and it just worked. Same thing again, one light setup. The difference is I shot with a 50 mil lens this time. So I wanted a bit of a quirky angle. I wanted that point and shoot aesthetic to it almost. Like someone's taken on a disposable camera at a 1980s office party. That was the vibe. Following on from that, we shot my favorite Christmas drink, a snowball. Advocar, lemonade, lime juice, and a cherry on top. This will divide a room quicker than pineapple on a pizza. And again, single light setup. This time, not so much in terms of blocking and things, it's all about the angle. The placement of the light is so important. And again, a lot of photographers, they put a light down, see a problem and try and correct it with a second light, third light, fourth light. And obviously on client jobs, we sometimes have to do that. But generally speaking, there's not much you can't do with one light if you put it in the right place. Placing the light is key. And that comes down to predominantly understanding the law of incidence and the inverse square law. They are your fundamentals of photography. Now we followed this shot up with perhaps my least favorite shot of the day. And this was a martini and it's, it's not that the drink was bad or the concept was bad. I just didn't like the color palette, I think. I think that's what it came down to. I should have custom painted a board. Maybe we'll fix it in post. Um, but again, this shot here was very much fabric, the hard surfaces, and then the drinks with a bit of Christmas decor. I just find the blue doesn't really work for me, and I don't know why. Um, maybe we'll dig deeper to that into a different video just to have a look at exactly what went wrong with that. And again, lighting-wise, this was just single light angled carefully. Again, with the hyper-reflector. And with this hyper-reflector, you see the shape of it? It actually, you can really, one, it puts out a lot more power. It gets a lot of light thrown forward, if you look in there but also it has a real hard edge to it. So when you move it around, you can get a real stark finish to where the light is. And that was useful. Obviously a lot of the work with the fabric and the draping, it comes down to shadows and creating those shadows, which again is why a single light source is better because when you start to add more lights, you start to remove the shadows. The only thing we added to this shot were a couple of mirrors to bounce some light into the label. And the last shot of the day, the drinks trolley. Again, single light shot coming in at about 60 degrees, I'd say, very high up. I'd say my, well, actually I know my light was 14 foot in the air because it hit the ceiling. You see on all of my lights, they have scratches on these bits here because they always hit the ceiling. So my light was 14 foot up, angled really steeply down because the draping of the fabric needed that in order to cast those shadows. The drinks trolley was set. We'd got one drink on it, which was an old fashioned with a bit of fake ice in there and an orange peel and the rest of it was just set as a scene. We've got the volivant, which are classic 80s drinks again, the purple curtain, a little bit of tinsel on baubles on the edge of the trolley, and that was it. And the trolley itself was just the trolley we use for our styling kit here when we need to move stuff around easily. And that's all we did. We finished there, and that was 6.30. I backed up, 
packed up, headed home, and I was done for the day. Now, if you want to do a real deep dive into my style of work, the more complex stuff for the the subject selection, all the rest of it, I have a workshop coming up. The link is down below. Pre-sale tickets are on offer now at 50% discount until they sell and then then we we don't do sales. Um, But we do a pre-sale, so kind of winning for those early birds. If you're watching this in 2023, you've missed the boat, but you can still buy it as an instant digital download. If you want to see more of these videos, do let me know. Do let me know in the comments below what it is you like, what you want more information on, and we'll try and get that all put together for you. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.